Hello everyone and welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons and we're back here at Mission Control and uh, in this episode we're going to be rewiring the Applied Energistics controller. So by this point lots of you will know how much I enjoy Applied Energistics and we've been doing a lot of it recently. Um, I think we're going to be switching it up here in the next couple of episodes, perhaps starting bees. Um, but at least in this episode the focus is going to be to rewire this spaghetti mess right here and if there's any Italians watching... I'm not actually sure what the percentage of Italians are um, Watch who watched this episode. Maybe that's some statistics we'll have to gather for next episode. <laughs> but the reason I'm saying that is because, yeah, we do not want spaghetti whenever we, whenever we uh, rewire the controller. So as you guys know, we are moving base from the overworld here into the void dimension. Um, and so we're going to be moving the brains of our applied energistic system, our digital uh, item storage system and auto crafting solution. You guys know what applied energistics is by now, right? But <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna still go over um, everything we're doing here, especially when it comes to the sub networking and the P2P channels, because I know a lot of you uh, are unfamiliar, or maybe it's just been a while since you've uh, messed with applied energistics. So I want to cover that in depth here today. So I have just been running around here trying to determine if anything is gonna break permanently once we take our system offline. The only thing that comes to mind is the turbines are no longer going to receive fuel because these are supplied via Applied Energistics Fluid Export Buses. Although I guess we do buffer a full super tank of benzene for every set of large gas turbines. Plus we have our Lapitronic super capacitor up here which is essentially the same as storing fuel. Um, but we're doing actually one better, we're storing energy. Um, so in fact if we check mission control here, reload the chunks. Yeah we're at 2.1 billion. So even if we run out of, or even if the system disconnects, we're going to have enough power to turn it back on, which is actually the main thing. Um, and power for us today is going to, where am I going? Power for us today is going to be a limiting factor. Um, because if you didn't know, just as a quick recap, the applied energistic system um, will passively take power from every single device. Besides the cabling, I think, every single device requires power to stay connected. Uh, like, for example, if we check the ME controllers that we have on on this network, we have, I think, 11. And those drain 165 EU a tick, which doesn't sound like a lot, but all of that will really add up very quickly. Um, so as much as I would like to go crazy with this controller setup, power is going to be our limiting factor. Um, but we're going to build it in a way that we don't ever have to rewire. But I also want it in a way that we can easily expand as well. So if we run out of channels on the network that we built today. I want it to be that we just add more controllers and plug in some more channels and uh, yeah we're good to go basically. So we're gonna lay out the controller like this. Um, so I've been doing a bunch of batch crafting here. We should have enough cable in I think. Um, I made 43 controllers which actually isn't going to be enough because we're going to do a subnet system but we do have some me controllers in the overworld which should make up the subnet system so i think we're going to have enough controllers here so i don't know i don't actually know where to start here i guess we'll start with the the controller each controller can give you 32 channels out of every face so because there's six sides to a controller block that's a uh, 192 channels Dense cable can handle all 32 of those channels, whereas the regular Flux cable, Smart cable, ME conduit, or Covered cable can only handle 8 channels. So ideally we plug Dense cable into every single face of the controller for an optimal design. Um, hello Thumbcraft. But that's not really feasible with a controller so compact like this, because you're going to end up with uh, cables everywhere. And where the cable, where the controllers are touching like this, we still only get 32 channels through this this piece of cable. And if we do this, we're still only at 32 channels because we're limited by the wire. Ah, uh, wire. By the the cabling. So this is actually very inefficient. Copper. Instead, what we can do is go through a P2P tunnel, which will transfer channels. Um. So if we do this. This has 32 channels or since it's connected to the face of the controller. And then we can send this wire to where we need it. For example, uh, a machine controller or an input bus. And then on the other side, we have the other side of the ME P2P tunnel. And so long as these are on the same frequency, they will act as if you're plugging this cable into this face of the controller. 
but still we can make this more efficient if we add an extra controller here in between the two P2P points. So we are still going P2P into the main net. I'm, I'm going to refer to this as main net. This is just a representation of main net. So we're still going P2P into main net. Then we're going into the subnet and the subnet is going to be built uh, somewhere up there. So we're going P2P into subnet. Then we send the wire to the machine. Then we send the P2P output. And uh, so long as these two P2Ps are on the same frequency and have power, then it's as if you're still plugging this piece of cable into this piece of controller or into the top face of the controller. So the main advantage to doing it this way is we're condensing all the channels down into fewer cables. So in fact, we can also go dense cable from the, the subnet controller. So that's 32 channels, right? And from these 32 channels, we can place 32 different P2Ps and each P2P is 32 channels. So that's 1024 channels from each face of the subnet controller. So long as you have 32 P2Ps connected to mainnet. And ideally we also dye the cable as well, just for aesthetic purposes. Um, so yeah, you can do a bunch of different colors and the colors will not connect to each other. So we can actually use that to our advantage here. Like if you have a, a blue cable next to a red cable, these will not connect. So I hope all of that makes sense, at least the basic concepts of the P2P system and why we're doing it here. Uh, let me do some wiring and I'll show you what it looks like on the main controller here. So two sides of the controller are now built, as you can see behind me. Um, we have red and green, which might be changed before the end of the episode. I'm not 100% sold on red and green. I think the red is one of the coolest colors for cable colors, but I don't know if it fits in this base. As I mentioned, this controller design is built for future expansion and not necessarily for efficiency right off the bat. So there's a lot of sides of the controllers which don't have any P2Ps at the moment, which is going to increase our power cost. I'll go over the specific P2P setups in a second, but uh, now that it's wired, now is the tricky part because now we have to start disconnecting things and, uh, well, yeah, where do we even start with this thing? Like what? What on earth is going on? <laughs> I didn't make it very easy for myself here. So, um, hmm, how are we going to do this? Is there anything we disconnect here that's going to, like, break anything here in the overworld side? Um, we can see some stuff here. Autocraft, Northwest. Actually, it gives us a highlight, right? If we, if we highlight this, it's going to, we're going to see where it's connected to. So, this one is the Platinum Line. Plat Line 3. You can see in the tooltip there the name on the P2P. Yeah, the ones for the void, I did label the void. So this one is Petrochemistry 1. Maybe we should come up with some new naming system for the P2Ps, just to try to keep them organized when we have them in the overworld. Even though there is that highlight system, which is pretty decent with the advanced memory card. I mean, how are we gonna, like, how are we gonna, how are we, how are we gonna do this? Okay, first of all, first of all, we need to give this power, right? We need to give the new system power. So let's start there, I guess. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll use our existing network to power this brand new network or these two new networks. Um, so, but we'll keep them completely separated by the use of a quartz fiber. And I forgot you can't do this either. You have to have the faces of the controller touching to make it a complete multi-block. Okay, so this powers the subnet and also the P2P tunnels, but we also have to power the main net since the power does not go through the P2P tunnels here. You might have spotted that we did have uh, some controllers which appear to have power, but those were just the, the fake chisel blocks. The, these are not actually ME controllers. I removed them just to make things a bit more simple because um, it was getting a bit confusing to be honest. And I think we're also missing three controllers. Yeah, we'll also have to have controllers here here and here to make it a complete multi-block and make this one applied energistics controller. Um, I did remove some from the sides here, but we'll replace those back when we need to add the extra P2Ps. Um, I just wanted both sides to be symmetrical for the time being, since it's going to be like this for uh, quite a number of episodes, I think. Yeah, so we do have to send power to the main controller, and we can again do that with some uh, quartz fiber. I think we'll go underneath here, and we... We actually only need one connection, but we'll do two just for symmetry again, <laughs> something like that. And that lights all the controllers and we should now have our mainnet powered and subnet powered. So let's check how much power we are consuming right now, just with the ME controllers. Oh my goodness, 735 EU a tick. 
<laughs> this is crazy expensive. A thousand EU a tick just for this. And th we don't even have anything connected to our network right now. So um, mm, maybe we built too big to begin with. I don't know. So what was the number we arrived at last episode for our uh, total power generation? I think it was 120 or 119,000 and some change EU a tick. Um, by the way, I did move these turbines forward just to keep them in the chunk boundaries. Uh, so they're now consistent on all sides here. Yeah, so we should be okay for power, but it's uh, something we just have to be constantly aware of. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here, actually well I remember, is disconnect the crop output. So this ender chest goes up to, or I guess the crop input I should say. So that, that connects up here and receives all the, the crops that the farms are uh, generating. But we want that disabled just in case we mess up the storage situation, because the crop outputs go to a separate location. Remember, those go to uh, super chests, which void overflow. Okay, let's begin by trying to get some terminals online. And uh, we'll, do, we'll make that the first P2P connection that we establish. So I want to install some terminals in the wall here, since that was the purpose of the control room. Other than the screens, of course. But um, we should have some spare in the ME system. Yeah, we want at least a fluid terminal, interface terminal, crafting terminal, and pattern terminal. I guess we'll take it from here. Um, so the question is, do we want it at this level here, or do we want to push it back a block? Yeah, which one is better, like this, or or this way? I think I'm a fan of this one a bit more, in set a block. And uh, I've also tried something a bit different, which is to colour the terminals separately. Um, I don't know, I've coloured the fluid one blue, for obvious reasons, and then went green on the interface and pattern terminal, which actually are backwards for me. Always, always, always for me, interface terminal is on the right. Crafting in the middle, fluid underneath, and pattern terminal on the left. I'm sure you guys all have your own setups, <laughs> but at least for me, this is what I'm used to, so this is what we're going to stick to. Um, but uh, considering what I said earlier about the cables not connecting, we are going to have to also connect up here with uh, some regular cable. Uh, just some covered cable, no need to use smart cable here. So that will connect it. Oh, actually, I guess we can do this and then uh, cover the back up with some facades just to hide the cable. And I guess we'll have an extra an extra block that sticks out, but we can make this work because we also have to, of course, uh, power this and uh, get an, a connection down to the controller. Aha, uh -huh, so now we have to give it the channels and uh, I'm going to use a wireless connector here because I, I really want this main... I don't want any cables going up here into into the terminal so I want it to be wireless even though this again costs power <laughs> so we're going wireless into P2P and then into the terminals and we can cover this up later on since there's nothing actually back here so we can hide some we can hide some extra support blocks and uh, yeah we can cover all this up later and the other side to the wireless we've got right in the middle of the subnet so we can connect these two together with the connector um, I should have used the staff of traveling so much so much sooner but it's it's good now that we have wireless charging because it does actually take quite a lot of power every time you teleport um i mean it's a decent amount i think it depends how far you go so we'll uh, connect the wireless connectors so this connects to our subnet and now this should get a channel the p2p now all we have to do is find a, a free p2p on the main controller um so counting this out we have one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and then 4 on the bottom makes 32. So that caps out this uh, dense cable here at 32. I don't know why it says 12. Are we missing cable somewhere? Oh, you know what? I think it's because this smart cable is trying to carry the channels from the ones behind it. So I think what we have to do here is is put a piece of cable anchor here and that should separate it out and make sure those channels go to the dense cable. Um, once it updates... Hello? Don't tell me I've done something wrong here. This was working! <laughs> Aha! Found it! Found it! There's another connection down here, right? So we need to add one more one more cable anchor, since the smart cable can only have one connection to the dense cable. And now once it updates, we should see 32 channels, right? Yes, perfect. 
Okay, so now that we have all the P2Ps connected, I think I'll, I made the same mistake over here. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. So two more cable anchors here and here and connect this up with green. Yes, so now the green is also 32. You can see in the in the tooltip there of the cable. So I think what we'll do in terms of the naming, uh, I'm just gonna call this terminals. I'm not gonna include the fact that it's in the void because by default, everything is gonna be in the void. And then any overworld connections will have over overworld in the name if it needs to go there. Um, but then we can just connect this up to the one that is terminals, bind it together, and we should now have those four channels available. And these terminals are gonna be online. Yes, perfect, but we can't see any of our storage because none of that is connected. So here's where things get tricky. We're gonna disconnect over here, which is a bit scary. <laughs> we're, we're gonna start disconnecting stuff. Um, we are gonna leave this controller in place. We're gonna disconnect all the, yeah, disconnect all the cables that go into the, P, into the subnet. So this is our old subnet, this little controller down here. We want to disconnect this. Yeah, so now we essentially want to swap out the subnets and uh, we're gonna transfer it over and keep this main net disconnected since this is the old main net and we're gonna be phasing this out. Uh, so we can rebuild the quantum ring, which I just dismantled from over there. Okay, so we've got the quantum link chamber rebuilt here in place of the old subnet, um, but apparently this quantum link chamber can only carry 32 channels across dimensions. So. I'm hoping that we can condense all these cables down into one smart cable. 10, 25, 28. Yeah, I think we're actually in luck here. I'm counting 28 channels that we're using, or 28 P2Ps that we use in the overworld. So we need to condense all these cables down into one and feed that into the quantum link. Like that. So we've now, uh, wait, why, why are these offline? 19, 20, okay, it just took a second to update. Yeah, so 28 channels, 28 P2Ps. I've also gone ahead and rebuilt the quantum link chamber on this side. And so now we should see those 28 channels appearing right here, which we do. Aha, and now we can disconnect this quartz fiber and uh, we can plug this main line straight in if we have any more blue cable. And now this is now our main uh, subnet, well, yeah, this is now our subnet, our one and only subnet, and this is now our one and only main network. So now, actually, if I'm not wrong, we should see all of the P2Ps available on the network if we uh, interact with the P2P here. At least the output sides, right? Not the ones that are connected to the controller. We can! Oh my goodness, this is so good. Okay, it works. We should see those, uh, the ones that we saw earlier, like Platinum or Platline 3. There it is. That's the Platline 3 that we saw. I mean, it's the same frequency. It's not actually the same P2P. Uh, we're not seeing this one on the on the old controller. We're not seeing whatever one it was. I think it was here. Um, because we've disconnected, or I thought we disconnected. We actually don't need this anymore. Yeah, that shouldn't have been connected right there. So now we're only using 19 channels because these ones are now disconnected and we can tear all of this out, the old controller. I'm gonna leave it just for now, just in case we have to debug. Yeah, so it's actually 19 P2Ps that we have uh, in various locations here in the overworld. So now at this point, we just have to select P2Ps and uh, link them to the ones that already exist. So this will be the new input sides and the output sides we already have next to all the machines. Um, but I'm going to go through and rename it sensibly so that we know where everything is. Because names like Oil 1 and Northwest 1, we have no idea where this is anymore. So, and it's kind of, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. And like ore processing, we want this to be labeled uh, overworld or something like that. Uh oh, the server doesn't like that. <laughs> it does not like that at all. Are we going to get back in? Okay, it, it was just a client crash. The server the server is fine. It was just a client crash. I don't know what happened there. Um, I think we have to rename them at the actual P2P. So yeah, I'm going to go through and link everything together. I mean, you get the idea by this point, right? We have a lot of... We have a lot of connections which we have to establish. And I'm also going to clean up the wiring underneath here. Um, I did add, oops, jetpack, please. I did add some uh, tinted glass and all the holes in the base. So that should happen less. <laughs> but um, you guys remember this cable that ac accidentally got dyed? This actually feeds our benzene system, which I want on its own P2P tunnel. So now I've got the tedious task of going through every single P2P and ensuring it's connected properly. 
And of course, I'm going to name everything appropriately as well, so we can find everything in the future. I have just remembered about the network visualization tool, which would help us out a lot here. But unfortunately, I don't have it crafted. It's not in the bags anywhere, and of course, our system is currently disconnected, so that's <laughs> not really a whole lot of use right now. Um, but yeah, try not to break anything. Three. Oh, my mouse is... It's the mouse. It's not me. <laughs> okay, time for fixing stuff. So I was thinking a lot about this naming system and I ultimately ended up going for a location based approach. Since we have our base chunk aligned, I was able to divide it up into a positive x and y coordinate and a negative x and y coordinate. So I took a screenshot of the full screen map in game and imported it into Photoshop. And from there we essentially were able to map a graph overlay uh, so that now every chunk is represented by its own set of coordinates that can be referenced in the naming of the P2Ps. The coordinates will always be first in the name, for example, 5, 4 or 3, 2. And then we add a descriptor such as chemistry 1 or platline 2. Anything that is still in the overworld gets an OW prefix instead of any coordinates and then again gets the descriptor. And so yeah, I basically just followed those rules and applied it to every single P2P in the base, both in the overworld and in the new base in the void. And it did take quite a while, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of tedious. <laughs> but um, I'm quite glad I took all the time to get all this stuff sorted out, because I don't know about you guys, but clean base, clean mind. So uh, yeah, it, it just helps straighten it all out in my own head. And it's also nice knowing that we no longer have any spaghetti in the base as well. So sorry Italians, but it has to be done. <laughs> it has to be done, and it's done now. Hmm, okay, so I'm saying that it's done, but there's actually a few things we have to uh, sort out here. And there's one thing I have no idea how to fix, and maybe you guys are going to know, but I don't know right now. And we have to fix it by the end of the episode because it's, it's a pretty crucial thing. <laughs> I mean... For some reason, we cannot craft nano circuits, and uh, the reason for that is uh, the circuit board recipe, the advanced circuit board recipe. And this recipe requires two fluids, both for the advanced board and the epoxy board. We need sulfuric acid and iron 3. And I know for a fact that we have those. I know for a fact that we're full on both of those fluids, right? Yeah, 4 million here, iron 3, and 4 million here, sulfuric acid. So why then, Applied Energistics, won't you craft me? Why? 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 <laughs> what, am I, what am I missing? It's probably something very obvious here. It's probably something that I'm completely overlooking. I mean, we make it in this chemical reactor down here, right? And uh, this recipe is unchanged. Should be down... Oh, what's with all the cave sounds? I get like 10 of those every second. It should be in one of, those, one of these uh, dual interfaces down here. Yeah, it's here, for the circuit board, advanced circuit board. And this is a dual interface, we're capable of carrying fluids. None of this has changed. And all of these things have channels, otherwise we wouldn't see the recipe show up. Um, I honestly don't know what it is. What am I missing here? Is it? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second, it's this, it's the fluid discretizer. Or discretizer? Fluid discretizer? It's this thing. It is this. I, I know for a fact it's this thing. Oh, this has to be it, right? Because this this fluid discretizer allows for uh, fluid auto crafting and uh, those fluid packets from Applied Energistics. You know all the... Oh, now we're offline. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Yeah, no power. That is... Why? Wait, 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 wait a second. Why don't we have any power? This is all unchanged because this network has power, right? Like, these cables are on. We can see the lights in the cable. And it's still carrying 32 channels. The subnet is still on. But it's not running power to the main net. I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if uh, we're just consuming too much power now. Okay, this was definitely not on the cards. Um, I, d I did not plan for this at all. Um, okay, hold on. Hold on a second. We have to find our power sources for applied energistics. And from what I remember, we have one here which is the Grandmaster Magic Energy Absorber. This takes power from the Dragon Egg and feeds it into an energy acceptor. Let's refresh this because I know sometimes the cables can be a little strange. So the energy cell here has a tiny trickle of power, but yeah, this one here is empty. So that's one source of power for the Applied Energistic System. I know we have another one up next to the Lapitronic Supercapacitor, uh, which is up here. Yeah, and we're feeding it straight from the battery. We have an EV dynamo hatch into an energy acceptor. Let's uh, break and replace this, just in case there's anything weird going on. The, su the supercapacitor still has energy, right? Let's check mission control again. I think we still have energy. Um, yeah, 800, 800 million. Let's see, we're also giving it energy in the overworld side, or at least we should be. Um, I think we still have our energy except... Oh, Creeper. You shouldn't be here. That's actually not a good sign because we have a monster repellator or repeller, whatever it's called. Monster repellator. I think our one is EV, which uh, prevents mob spawns in a certain range, like a couple hundred blocks. So there should not be any mobs in this base. And from what I remember, it's down... Is that a skeleton? It's a fallen knight. <laughs> From what I remember, that monster repellator is down here at ore processing. It's it's down there, you see it? So that means that this line has no power in it. And if that is the case, that also means that our battery is empty here. Under here, are these empty? They are empty, okay. And these turbines are not turning on, so... All oh, right, yeah, this is a P2P tunnel, and I, I, I guess I forgot about this P2P. Hello, skeleton. <laughs> Hello, skeleton. Oh, it's a baby skeleton as well. I was wondering what that was in the corner of my eye, and he dropped a pretty decent sword there. Aha, uh -huh, so where are we going to link this P2P? I think I want to link it to one of the benzene ones, uh, one in the overworld, but one of these is using, like, 32 channels already, and one is only using... Uh, 19 and because it's offline we can't really see that right now so I don't really know which one's which I think if I was to guess the one closest to us is using less channels um, at least by the looks of it because this one goes down four different lanes and this one is only down two and this one here is labeled benzene 2 okay so let's let's connect this up to benzene 2 here but because the system is offline it's not gonna yeah the whole network is offline uh, so what we're going to have to do here is... Yeah, this super tank here is empty. Do we have any spare benzene here at the old system? Or did I take all of this? We have 2 million in this super tank. I probably should keep at least a few super tanks uh, cached away somewhere. Just in case we do have a complete blackout. Because <laughs> that would not be good. Um, although I think the main buffer for benzene is... Should still have some stuff in it. Um, yeah, let's put down this tank here. Or at least give it the benzene that we have. That should kickstart the turbines again. Um, I've seen the redstone signal was on. So the, the turbines should still turn on. Which they are. That's going to fill the battery. And we have a energy acceptor under here. Right? Yes, we do. So this is probably the power that we're missing. And we might have to add a few more energy acceptors. Um, yeah, so this comes from our main battery up here into some transformers, into an energy acceptor, and then into the quantum link. Okay, now we should be on, and we are. Okay. My, I, <laughs> I had a slight panic attack there. Let's, um... Okay, what do you guys say is the number we're uh, consuming here for EU in the applied energistic system? Okay, 5.1 thousand in the main net. And how much in the subnet? Another, uh, like, 2,000, I would say. Oh my goodness, close to four... Uh, three and a half thousand. Yeah, so eight and a half thousand EU a tick. Um, 
all the time just to keep the network running. <laughs> Um, which is quite a bit actually, and uh, let's also try this fluid discretizer, which we picked up. That should allow us to craft with fluids. Um, and it, oh, can't do that. Yeah, we can't connect the these green or, or red lines to the main controller. Has to be separated by a P2P tunnel, because that's as if you're uh, connecting the subnet straight to the main net, which obviously you can't do. Uh, let's put this thing underneath, I suppose. And so now we should be able to request our nano processor, right? Yes, we can. Yeah, that's totally what it was. The uh, Applied Energistics needs that fluid discretizer, at least in GTNH, to work with uh, fluid packets. And I can see the energy cells filling up again, which is good. So the reason I wanted to craft this HV circuit is to get this uh, network visualization tool, which is going to allow us to view the whole network. And uh, I'm kind of curious as to what it looks like. So I think if we just click on any device, uh, like here, it's going to show us all of mainnet. Oh no, we just clicked on subnet there. Yeah, we. This is all of the subnet, so you can see uh, all the connections down to the the different P2Ps. We have storage, we have our uh, distillation one, two, and three. We have uh, LCRs one and two. Uh, more storage. Yeah, you can see all of the different connection points. Let's check the mainnet. Oh yeah, now you can see all the points in the. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a much bigger network. I'm actually curious about the overworld as well. Let's go check that out really quick. I mean, it's going to be a much smaller network than it used to... Wait. Oh, I, th I think that was just a visual bug. We have to refresh it here. Uh, so if we click on this... Yeah, so this is all of the subnet cabling. It's actually a bit less than I thought it was. Um, it doesn't actually look as bad from this view. Uh, but let's check mainnet. So we can click on any... Any uh, output P2P point, which we can probably find down here somewhere. Like, this is probably mainnet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the plat line. <laughs> Look at the state of the plat line. Yeah, there's uh, a bunch of networks down there. What is, th what is that? That's the benzene system, right? Yep, and then the, the crop processing, fluid storage. Oh, my goodness, so many things at fluid storage. But lots of this is disconnected as well. And then... Yeah, I guess a lot of ore process processing isn't showing. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool to uh, check out the visualization tool from the, from time to time. And we'll have to see how it evolves here in the in the new base in the void. Aha, I just realized I forgot to connect up the blast furnaces down here. And the blast furnaces are going to be a bit different. Um, I'll show you the way they used to be once we craft up two more wireless connectors. So the way it used to be is we would have four wireless connectors right on the main walkway. Uh, connected to the subnet, but I didn't really want all of that messy wiring up here, especially when we have the glass above. Um, so I've switched it out and put the connector here, just one connector, which connects down underground. And I think we're going to do this in a lot of places, but um, yeah, we're sending a wireless connector down, and then it goes into the P2P connection right here. And I've also modified all the cable colors so that it, all the cable is now a blue net for subnet and orange net for main net. And then everywhere we have a, a P2P, we also have a piece of smart cable, so we can view the amount of channels that are being used into the smart cable. Um, the only exception for the cable coloring is next to the data drives. So we do have the smart cable here to tell us which how many channels it's using. Um, but I've not switched out the cable colors here for the data drives. I feel like orange here, is ju it just stands out a little bit too much. Um, so maybe we'll dye these black. These are just regular default uncolored cables. Um, so I think I might dye them black or white just to keep them a bit more monochromatic. Um, at least for the data drives. Uh, yeah, for, for the storage here. So back at the EBFs, we're uh, sending the connection down here. And then after the P2P, we can chain wireless connectors since these can actually act like cable and they will pass the channels through each other. But it can also uh, pass it to the wireless connection point. So I think we're missing one under this EBF and then the other one over here. And the reason we're too short is because I added uh, two extra, one here and one to send the connection down. So that should get this terminal back on. Uh, apparently not. Did I even link the P2P here? No, it's unlinked. Perfect. <laughs> I knew I'd miss some stuff. I knew I'd miss some stuff, but I, I believe that is the last one. I, I think that is the last one we were missing. Okay, this P2P can be for the blast furnaces. And uh, yeah, you can see here are the coordinates, 1 minus 5 for blast furnaces. 
And then any second now, it should show us how many channels are in use here. Yep, there we go, 11 channels for the EBFs. Hey, now I see you, Creeper. I see you, Creeper. <laughs> Is there any others that are here still? I hope those guys are from before and not, um, not new spawns. Okay, I do feel much better now that that job is done, but we still have a little bit to go this episode. First of all, we can now safely demolish this controller. Adios, controller. Or ciao. I guess ciao would have been more appropriate. <laughs> I think it's ciao anyway. Uh-huh. Oh, that felt great to do that, I'm not gonna lie. And we have a few spare controllers, so we'll make our subnet symmetrical now and do that. I think it's going to grow in the future as well, but again, the power costs, so I want to be careful with how many controllers we spam. And there's also two more things I want to move this episode. The first is, is actually these turbines. We can move these over to the void dimension. However, not before we can ensure that we can still send energy uh, to this battery buffer in the overworld. So what I've done is went ahead and set up a GregTech energy P2P. Uh, so not only can the P2Ps transfer fluids and items and channels, they can also transfer energy. So we have the energy going into the input side of this EU P2P, which is connected to our Lapitronic supercapacitor. So I think all we have to do now is place a platinum cable here. And we should be sending 16 amps of IV power into this battery buffer. I'm going to disconnect. Uh, this was the old input. And this is the input from these turbines. So I'm going to disconnect the input. And uh, let's plug in this platinum cable. Hope for no explosions. I haven't done any backups either. So... Okay, it looks like we're not getting any EU through this thing. Did I connect the P2P up here? Because we want to be on mainnet, not on subnet. I think I might have just not connected this. Oh no, that's connected. And the EU P2P is also connected. Yeah, we only have two EU P2Ps on the network. 4DF is the frequency and they're both on 4DF. Uh, maybe we just have to reset the connection here. Yeah, what are we doing on this side here? This side we're going um, into a EU P2P to put us on mainnet. And then we're going into the GTEU P2P. And then, do you guys remember that dynamo hatch that I crafted by accident last episode? And it used to be under here. Um, we have that on the side here, which is feeding into this platinum cable and then into the EU P2P. So maybe this just needs refreshed. Yeah, the dynamo hatch still has energy inside. So that should be sending EU, if I'm not wrong. Nope, the battery is still draining here, so I... I actually don't know what's up with that. Apparently these things are quite laggy as well. Quite unreliable, which is why I've been reluctant to use them so far. So maybe we just leave this for now, and maybe you guys can let me know what's what's up with this. And we'll just leave the turbines here, because it's not like we actually need the power in the, in the void base just yet. Yeah, that's strange. We should be seeing some amperage come out here, unless I'm missing something. Everything is linked together. It's on the same network. Unless it has to go straight into the battery buffer. Yeah, let's try it this way. Once it receives a channel, now are we charging? Uh, 688, 680, no, the batteries are still draining. All right, well, I guess we're not doing EU P2P. <laughs> Unless I'm missing something, which is very possible. Well, in that case, we're going to end the episode here by investing in some wireless, and it's about time. And I don't mean the wireless connectors. I mean the wireless terminal. Assuming we can craft it, I think we can by now, though. Uh, not the universal, because that's every single one. Although, maybe... Oh, no. Infinity booster card? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting that right now. I think we can get the wireless crafting terminal, at least. Yeah, see, this is pretty... Oh, no. Dense energy cell. Uh, LUV circuits. Yeah, we can do this. A bunch more energy cells. Okay, this is actually expensive. Hold on. Yeah, let's empty the inventory first. And uh, also, throughout this episode, you might have spotted me switching hotbars like this. And this is uh, from some of you guys commenting, and yeah, thank you so much for whoever commented and suggested that we craft it. So I made it up between episodes, it's something called the, this thing, the Traveler's Belt from Tinker's Construct. It's actually very simple to craft, we should have crafted it way sooner. 
there is a key bind for it on their belt, on their Tinker's Construct. I have it bound to Yen, which is a, a weird button. It's not actually Yen, but it's, <laughs> it's the one next to Z. And uh, yeah, it can swap the hotbars, and it just gives you an extra hotbar. Um, I don't think you can access it from the inventory. This extra hotbar, you just have to interact with it when it's when you swap. But yeah, either way, we now have like an extra hotbar that I've just filled with all the tools. So we have like the healing axe, we have the toolbox for maintenance, we have a lot of the tools which are not in the tool cycling slots. So I still keep the snips and the wrench in the tool cycling. And then, uh, yeah, we have the soft mallet, screwdriver, crowbar, some AE tools, and the scanner in the secondary hotbar. And then we just carry the staff of traveling and the Vajra in the main slots. And this network visualization tool, I guess we're going to put away. We don't need to have that out all the time, really. So, yeah, anyways, for the wireless terminal, I believe we're going to need some HV circuits. We're going to batch craft about half a stack. We need also a security terminal, right, to be able to interface with the network which is a 16k ME storage. Of course, we don't have any of this crafted. ME chest. Oh, we have the ME chest. Okay. I mean, fortunately, at this point for us, all this stuff is on autocraft. Uh, it's just very slow to actually put together. Okay, there's our security terminal. I don't know where we're going to put this. We need uh, two more of these wireless receivers, which we use in the wireless connector crafts. An illumination panel for a uh, ME terminal. There we go. Uh, let's see, what is this going to be? Five energy cells for the dense, and I think we do have the LUV circuits crafted already. Yeah, we do. Along with the transformer. Alright, there is five... Nope, that's only one. <laughs> We're just missing some flukes blocks. I think we have those on... Yeah, we have those on autocraft. Let's get a couple of those. Okay, there's our five energy cells, which will convert into a dense energy cell, and I believe this is also a quest, so I want to hold this. Dense boys. <laughs> nice. And yeah, that should be everything for the wireless terminal. I'm hoping this actually works with wireless charging that we have. And it, uh, yeah, wow, it's charged already. Yeah, so we now have to link this to our network. Um, so I'm going to place the security terminal. Mm, I think we're going to go right on the controller here, but we will have to cable anchor the red and green and then security terminal right here. Ideally facing upwards, please. Maybe not. Like that, no. <laughs> nope. There we go. Yeah, now we can drop the wireless terminal in here to bind it to our network. And then we also need a wireless receiver as well, because as you can see, we're now out of range. Uh, so we need to give it range upgrades. And what is it called? Wireless access point, I think it is. Yeah, this thing. This looks simple enough to craft. And the final thing we need is the wireless booster cards. Obviously, we can't get the infinity one, as you saw. Um, but we can craft these regular wireless boosters and for every card that you add to the system it increases the range I don't remember by how much that's also a quest oh three quests <laughs> nice mm, I'm also not really sure where we, sh where we should put these access points ideally we want them very central uh, but we also need them on mainnet so let's see it starts off at a default range of 16 at 40 you a tick wait 40 by default. One card takes us up to 17 and 45 EU. How much is all 16? 200 EU a tick. For... <laughs> That's crazy, crazy expensive. 80 meters though. So 80 meters... Wait, are we getting access? Yeah, we are. So 80 meters is like... I don't know. Is that Does that take us to the portal? Nope, we're out of range. So it's like... It's going to be about here. Still out of range? Yeah, about here. Yeah, so we're definitely going to want a few of these access points, but again, energy cost, so <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll uh, try to distribute them uh, for next episode. But yeah, we now have wireless access to our applied energistics network, although this is not a crafting terminal. Surely we can make the crafting terminal, right? Uh, fluid terminal. Is there no wireless crafting terminal? Oh, there is. Oh, yeah, we can do... Oh, wait, 64Ks? Uh, do we have a spare singularity? I think I did batchcraft those, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Dang it, they're both... <laughs> Dang it, they're both quantum entangled, which means we have to... Uh, yeah, we have to feed 64... Or what is it? 512,000 items to that... The matter condenser. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, so let's just set up a little dual interface here into item pipe. We might as well get this thing going. And uh, we're going to request 
the water drop again. Yeah, you guys remember this from before, right? We can request water, and I think I actually disconnected our water supply, so I might have to plug that back in. But we're at 3.1 million. Obviously, water is free, so we can request this in the interface. Uh, hook up a conveyor. And then we want this on singularity mode. And we have to give this a 64k storage cell, right? Yeah, 64k goes in here, and then we can just import all the water droplets. And uh, these water droplets, by the way, is what we needed the fluid discretizer for. This is what allows Applied Energistics to interact with these uh, droplets of water, these item variants of the water, uh, which do work for here for the, the matter condenser, apparently. Maybe. Oh, it, it just wasn't connected. Okay. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be slow, but that's okay. <laughs> I think we're going to wrap up the episode right here. It's getting a little bit lengthy. Oh, yeah, I still have to do the crops as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to find a location for this crop input. And additionally, we have to find... A, well, we do have a space for the, the crafting storages, our crafting CPUs. And these things we do have a space for in the purpose-built rooms just next to the controller, so we have one on each side. I guess we'll start on this side right now, and then we'll just lay out a controller, or a, a crafting CPU. Yeah, I think we're severely lacking on crafting capabilities here, but that's all something we'll look into next episode, as well as plugging that in, because that needs a P2P connection as well. Anyways, guys, for now, that is going to do it for this episode. We'll add another access point right here. Just another casual 200 EU a tick, no problem. <laughs> so once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Gregtech New Horizons. I think I am going to switch out this cable colour. <laughs>